I'm Ray. And I'm Jenny, and we're Weber Family Reviews. And this is our 30 through 21. We really got to come up with a better intro than that. Um, well, you know, sometimes simple is good. I'm going to start this time, because oh. I want to. Okay. Because we're really getting into the good games. Of course, these first two, neither of us agree with that. Of course not. The City. This is a Tom Lehman, uh, and I'm sure I butchered the name, but a card game. Very similar to concepts along the lines for Race for the Galaxy, San Juan, those types of games. You play a card, that card gives you abilities, but you have to use cards in your hand to pay for it. And each one gives you a certain amount of resources and draws. And it starts really slow. You're like, oh, I'm never... Because the game ends when somebody gets to 50. This will take forever. Within seven turns, it's you, you pick one, you play one, spend cards on your hand. By turn seven or eight, it's guaranteed to be over. So it rapidly speeds up. It's fun. I think it's a blast. I understand her, her preference, though. Um, there is more to San Juan than this one. Uh, this one's a bit more pure engine building game. San Juan is an engine building game, but there's a couple of extra things, and she always likes cooler cards. So I understand why. It's just I think this is a, a, a bit a bit more streamlined. It is. It's definitely a faster game. I think that's actually my complaint, is that I just get my engine going and the game's over, and I felt like I didn't get to play with the engine I made. Um, and some of it's, I think, I am slower to start in getting that because I get distracted by pretty cards. Um, but I, I just always end up feeling like I wanted a couple more turns to really get to use what I built up. I, I guess I feel like the end's like, but I, I wasn't done yet. Um, whereas I feel in San Juan that I got to complete what I did. So that's my difference, I would say. Now my 30, and I don't know why this is in our list, is crazy. This is Seven Wonders Duel. Um, and we, I love Seven Wonders, but it is three players plus there's there's a two-player variant we've never played it it's awful this though is great I love how the pyramid works I love the control um okay do I if I take that one I flip and the other person might get it, it could be something really good because I don't know what's under there um and some are face up some are face down uh so I just really enjoy this one it works really well we just got the brand new expansion for this we haven't played it yet yep. so we'll see how Agora works but we really liked the last one um as well, the God Powers, Pantheons, yeah, Pantheon. The God Powers really did add a lot to it. Um, usually you win, there's three different paths to victory. Um, I think we've seen all three different paths to victory, mm -hmm. um, which is really neat because it shows that any of these are viable. Um, and we really look, in the first game or two, I think Ray had a really bad experience with, just kind of a bad thing. It's just like Seven Wonders, if you don't get the resources early on, you kind of yeah. can really get stuck. Um, but as long as it doesn't usually, it works out just yeah. like in, in Seven Wonders. Everyone knows you get the resources early in that first age. Um, but and really it, enjoyable. And really, if you like Seven Wonders, but you're usually playing, and right now everyone's playing with smaller groups, this is the game for you. And that, that really was the thing. There was one game where I actually didn't have access to get any resources. It literally flipped for you each time. You'd grab it, and I'd be stuck. And it was just like, Really? And it, it's just the and way I the think cards. there's a card that allows you to break someone else's stuff, and I got that. And I was able to break like the one thing he yeah. did get. It was just one of those bad plays in every game. It was like sometime. the first time we played it too. Yeah, yeah. and it took him. But then, oh, okay. And he can usually he can pull fun. off an economic. I always get distracted, and I can never finish an economic victory. You I mean to, the science one? Yeah, the science one. Um, I usually win the regular way, or I win um, a military victory, and uh, so. I will say, there the it's a good game. And I will play it with her, but I, there's other two-player games that I would go to. Just just the way it goes. I. This is not on her list. This was one of my highest-ranked games and still is. It's 29 now, mostly because of what became my number one game. Um, this is... And one of the things she seems to think is there's a lot of luck in this one. And there isn't. There is not a lot of luck in this one. But there is a lot of interference in this one. You play a card. So Downforce, I don't think I said the name. So Downforce is a racing game where you can also win by betting even if your cards lose. 
and you have a hand of cards and when you play the card you go top down and it's like blue green orange and it gives you numbers that's how far those core cars move if you're blue you move your car first and typically the farthest but you have to move the other cars too so if you're losing you could actually bet on your opponent's car run him up there and win because you bet on his car you come in second but his car came in first and you just made lots of money by betting on his car you get three bets so i think this one's great i understand her she doesn't even dislike it it works great four five six even three it works excellent it's a Two. really good group game and the thing yeah. is, is you literally do have your entire hand in front of you you're not drawing cards so you get to pick whatever you want so you do have a lot of control because there's no random yep. in the card draws so i agree with, with what he says is that there's no dice involved which is weird for him that he likes a game and there's no dice just um well but uh you know it, it is it's a good and i think for me it's a great game with the group it's yep. not a game we're going to play out two and three no. players, and we have been playing almost exclusively yeah. two-player games. So you get you get your yeah. 29. So my twenty-nine here is perfume, um, and this is you're making perfume, um, and again, there's a lot of you know action selection in here, and this actually works pretty well two-player. Yeah. Um, you just everyone gets two, but there's this wake-up order that sometimes doesn't work as well to player and it does in this game because you do I want to go two in a row do I want to alternate turns um, where do I want to go because it's gonna matter um, because of the way it resets if I need something I might have to go but you get more actions the later in the game you go um, the later in turn order you go but if you need a specific thing it's not gonna be there if you don't go first so there's a lot of thought yeah. in this um, and when do you sell yours? You're trying, obviously, if you can get it to the customer, it's better, but you can still sell your games and you get uh, perfume. Your, your perfume. You can still sell your perfume um, at, you know, kind of a discount price. And you get these water tokens, which give you rerolls because you're trying to decant your perfume and you can get flies and they cannot do it. You roll badly in this game. There is dice in this one. You roll badly in this game. Uh, you can really... Get, get into it like okay nothing happened here so you need those water tokens yep. to let you re-roll um and you get those by as you finish if you sell out of a perfume so i really enjoy it i think it's pretty it's mm -hmm. it's a rather it's a lighter one but it's still not i wouldn't say it's the lightest it's a good medium weight game uh, i think it's fun it's um i don't know everybody says i i love dice i like dice games but that one it just it works but there's lots of dice mitigation so it it it's a fun one it's just not going to be on my my top all right this was your 49 so i got dinosaur island worker placements action selection don't let your park doors get eaten <laughs> uh it's jurassic park in a box and um don't i'll, I'll just say it. you know you skip on the security you're gonna lose some park cars. It's just gonna happen. Um, I like it. I like it a lot. You gotta get the DNA to get the dinosaurs you're looking for. Carnivores are worth more points, but woo, you get the T-Rex and stuff and you better have the security to hold them or all heck breaks loose and you get to recreate the movie. So it it's actually a, a blast. It's a great worker placement game. It's a... Um, I'm trying to remember the the one thing I didn't like about it, but still got high. I think this has one of them. Yeah, it's got one of them weird the, the score tracker action select. Yeah. Other than that, I think it's excellent. I love the board. I love the the mechanisms. It's great. Dinosaur. The complaint is, is is the dinosaurs are all the same. Um, the meeples. The meeples. The, the the dino meeples aren't that great. But other than that, it's good. And we had the two player, but we prefer. This well, it one's works two, two player. player, so there's but no reason. We got dino we back dinosaur world. We're getting the cool meeples. Yeah. Bring out your cottage garden, you Uve. Yes. Lover. So my twenty eight was his sixty eight, which is cottage garden, um, and this is just such a pretty game. And I love that I get to build my little different gardens. I like how pretty the end result looks. Mm -hmm. um, this is definitely a table hog. You have to lay everything out, and uh, it takes up a lot of table space, but. It's just easy, and the end mechanic is very interesting because 
when the when you hit that sixth round, all of a sudden now you immediately lose some if you don't have enough flowers on it, and you go back for every turn it takes you to finish after yep. that last round. So you really have to be thinking that last round where you're gonna go, or you can really get yourself in a world hurt and lose a lot of points in that last round um, just because you didn't plan well. So you definitely have to be thinking ahead to that end. Um, but it's enjoyable. I like mm -hmm. fitting all the different ones in there. Um, you have a lot of control um, as you move over and you can see what's yeah. coming up. So you can do a lot of planning between turns. So it's this, and we have the Easter Bunny and Easter's coming up. So I'll be making him play this on Easter. So well, we've played it recently too. Yes, we have. All right, moving on to 27. I have all of Role Player. Role Player is a dice drafting character creation with some action uh, market and you get gold and you can buy it. So what the whole premise is, you're drafting dice, putting them into various stats for your characters. And at the beginning you get race, class, um, alignment. And you want to set everything up on your character board to match that. If you do, the closer you get to the optimal setup for that, the more points you get. So this is literally a game about one of my favorite parts of role playing, creating the character. So you create the character as you go. And the expansions, and I would say the Minions and Monsters is the most important expansion to have. I would say this may not have been on my... Uh, top 50 if we didn't have the Monsters and Minions because that gives you something to aim for as well. It gives you something beyond just the character creation. You're also going to be able to fight the big bad at the end of the game and possibly get more points. So, role player, my 27. I don't mind the game. I just, I'm not a role player, so it doesn't have the same theme appeal for me, but the actual mechanisms is good. So, it's a good game. Now, my 27 was his 49, and that's Sagrada. Mm. Um, and uh, this is, I think, just a really pretty game. I like building my little stained glass window out of the dice. Um, it's an easy game to kind of, it's an easy game to teach. It's an easy game to play. Um, but there's a lot of thought. It's very puzzly in where you're putting different things and trying to make them work. Um, and when do you use the powers, and when is it worth playing the different powers? Yep. Um, so, and we just recently got some of the expansions for this, so we'll see how yeah. they do. Um, the five to six player expansion, I think works really well. And we've had no, really, honestly, it doesn't add a lot of time no. to play this five or six player, which there's a lot of games that, oh, I can play this five to six player, but I shouldn't play this five to six player. This is a game that no problem playing five to six player. So if you want a game that can hold a few more people, this is a good option. You buy that five to six player expansion yeah. and you've got some good choices. My number 26 was, well, we'll, we'll see where it goes on hers. Reiko, uh, Anuve Rosenberg, 30 to 60 minutes, lighter, um, quick. You're getting greenhouses and you're attempting to, you're attempting to grow vegetables so that you can move along the score track. And the weird thing about the score track is you can move along the score track by spending these vegetables. And then one table, one table, you can eat at. You get the resources from it and move to the next one. And that can happen your first table in the row of scoring or your last and anywhere in between. So that adds a whole new dimension of, well, I'm missing, I'll just say, I'm missing cauliflower. Okay, so I get to the, I need four cauliflower to go forward. Instead, I get four cauliflower and move forward, and maybe I have five tomatoes. Spend the five tomatoes and keep rolling until I run out of, of food then. So it works great. Uh, several people have mentioned that it, it's got some limitations, and it, it does. It, its replayability might be a problem, but we haven't run into that yet. We also, because we play so many games, um, yeah. I think that replayability right, cool. often doesn't factor in for us. So if you're the type who, I want 10 games I'm going to play a lot of, it might be an issue, but we don't play like that. So, you know, that kind of 
yep. you know, take that with, with that stuff, but I really yeah. enjoy it. We, we've got a few that are up there. Yeah. But. Now my 26, I think you'll see higher on his list, and that's Pan Am. And this is uh, Cult of the New, definitely we bought this this year. <laughs> this was a um, uh, Target game. And this is a really- five bucks. Yes. And this is really a surprisingly heavy game. It's IP and you think, oh, you know, is this gonna be good? But it really is. It plays well two player, but I would say it is better three to four. The competition mm -hmm. does matter. I think three is probably it's optimal. Yeah, um, you, the more people definitely, we played this several times two player, really enjoyed it. And then we played it three player. We're like, oh, this completely changes the game because all of a sudden now I have to pay for things. In two player, you just don't pay for much because you don't have to. Um, I would say if you're the type that enjoys that, the competition really does add a nice dimension. But every you know year, you get a new year, you get a new event that changes up what yeah. you're doing. Um, and you're trying to, to build up your thing, but then you want Pan Am to buy you out. Um, so it's a really enjoyable game. You have to kind of, you know, the dice are gonna tell you where Pan Am expands and it's variable. So you know, you're buying based on where you think they're gonna go, but they yep. might not go that way. Um, so it's enjoyable. I think for 35 bucks, it's a really good game and there's a lot yeah. in here. So definitely worth picking up. And it's Target. I'm watching Target because Target, when they when they put games on sale or clearance, some of the ones they put on there, like I'm waiting for that. When that goes on clearance, everybody's getting it for the next like 30 years for, for birthdays and stuff. 25, Lords of Waterdeep. You know why? Because Lords of Waterdeep. That's it. It is a D and D themed game that confuses everybody because it is not a it's a worker placement economic game. I have really thought about updating the cubes, just to update the cubes so that, you know, the purple, purple cubes are mages. I'm even into the theming, and I don't call them the mages. I'm like, give me the purple cubes. But it is a solid worker placement that you can then expand and add additional buildings. So more places for people to go. When they do, you get a resource or money or, or something beneficial when they visit your building. Eight turns run smoothly. Is it eight turns? It might be I more. Think it's, I, think, I think it's eight. I think it's eight. It's uh, something, it's not very many. It's got a, it's a great, if you want to teach someone who hasn't played a lot of games, you know, yep. something worker, this is a great starter worker placement. And I don't, I, I was kind of like, oh, I don't want to play that. I'm not into the D and D theme. And I ended up really enjoying it. So I think it's one of those that it is easy. If you enjoy the theme, cool, you're gonna enjoy it. If you don't like the theme, no big deal. It's easy to overlook because they're just yeah. cubes. Um, and uh, the base game is really easy yep. to teach new players, but the expansion, which adds this um, corruption. Uh, corruption, really adds a yeah. lot of depth. So if you're looking for a more in-depth game, just add the expansion and you've got it. Yep. Um, and I just, I love that you get all the new I, I, I get so excited about the new buildings coming out. That's my favorite part of it. Cool part about this. I didn't have to convince you that this was my 25 for a reason. She did it for me. Great game. Lords of Waterdeep. I will pl We've owned this. This was one of the first games. Uh, there were, We were at a Barnes & Noble. I convinced you to buy this one and uh, Forbidden Island. And, and we still own both of them. We still own both of them. And we've played the heck out of it. And we. this one won't ever leave our... our collection i mean yeah now another game that would ever leave our collection although probably for memory is Catan geographies um germany and uh i like Catan in general he does not this is not on his list but he he, he will admit this is probably one of his favorite versions i think of this Catan. is my favorite um this is the map of germany so okay. unlike most Catans where you build the map and it's randomized this is always going to look the same because it's set up to match the geography of Germany. Um, and you get to build the different landmarks of mm -hmm. Germany. And it's really cool. The production on this is really nice. Yep. The buildings are really cool. And you get benefits when you build it. You don't get um, points. You don't get control of something the way you do when you build a city or a settlement. But instead, you get an instant kind of bonus. And some of those are really powerful yep. bonuses um, and uh, really enjoyable. I like it. I like the theme. I like all the different specialty yeah. Catans, and this is a really nice one. I think they did a great job with it. 
Um, and I like that you've got, a, you know, that extra little bit of, oh, I can build this, gives you something else to do. So when you're looking a little bit harder to get stuck because you have the wrong combination yep. in your hand because you have one more option of things to do. So. All right. The last one we talked about, uh, maybe not the last one, but two ago. I can't yeah, remember. Two ago. Yep. Two ago. We talked about Battle of the Five Armies. War of the Ring is if you want to play Lord of the Rings trilogy, and I'm thinking the books, but I know some of you are thinking of movies. More power to you. This runs through it. And I have always had epic experiences playing this game. Uh, I remember a friend of mine, and we were playing four player. It's a two or four player. Playing a four player, and I'm like, we really got to go out there. We're, we were the bad guys. And our wives ran the entire fellowship into Mordor. Didn't lose anybody. They were they just kind of walked, walked up. It's like Boromir chucked the ring into the fire. He was like, all right. And it was hilarious. It was fun. Um, you beat me with uh, free people military. It's yes. never happened before. I've played this game, first edition, second edition, for 20 years. We've never seen it happen. It happened. This is a great game. Go um, north. It Don't tell people. Go north and wake up them. Seriously. You don't need that many points as the free people to win a military victory. And yeah, it's possible. You do have to get everyone awakened at war. I got the right combination of cards, but it was really fun to win that way. So it's risk, but with better card play, better dudes on the map, multiple ways to win. I think it's great. So... War of the Ring. I have second edition here. There we go. Um, I, 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 it's not my theme. It's not my type of game, but we always have good experiences. Yeah. I agree with them that. Now, my 24, um, we've talked about how much I love Academy Games. We've talked about how much I love all the different historicals. This is 1775. Uh, I usually play this pretty much every year on the 4th of July. Yep. Um, and I really enjoy it. I love the theming. I think they did a great job with historical. I mean... I've ran these to death. If you like historical, um, if you like a war game, these all fit yeah. into that thing. But you don't have to like war games to like this. This can be played solo. This is one to two player. No, two to four. Oh, okay, one to two hours. Okay. <laughs> I was thinking it was weird that it was saying solo. I was reading the wrong thing. There are solo rules, I think, posted online. but no. There's solo rules to everything posted online now. Um, but we usually play this two player, but we've played this four player and it's yep. been enjoyable as well because um, you, if it's two player, you each play two factions. As four player, you each play your own faction, but you're a team. So works really well. Yep. All right. Super cult of the new, but the theme really gets to me. One small step. Space race. You got the Russians versus the Americans. And you're trying to be the first one to the moon. So you got worker placement, you've got engineers, you've got scientists. You're trying to get things situated, get the right amount of materials, and then continue through the steps that it took to get to the moon. Fun part about it, Academy Games. There's tons of historical theme in here. Problem with this, just like all other Academy Games, the rules are written as if they were written in the 80s for war games. So you're gonna go back and forth and you're gonna have to read a lot of segments two or three times to get what they mean. But when you actually get playing the game, it is. It feels, I actually think I, well, proof. I like it better than, you know, um, Twilight Struggle because of just the, the option. It's way higher than Twilight Struggle. Uh, just because the way it flows, this is a great game, and um, it is worker placement, but there's there's a lot to it. So it's even a bit of a it, it's kind Action. of a race game yeah. too because you're trying to do it. I really love it. Chances are it's higher on my list because I love all those. Now well, the ones I've been talking about, and here my twenty three is another Academy game, and so that's eight seventy eight. So oh, like this one. one is Birth of Europe versus Birth of America, but plays exactly the same. So I've talked recently mm. about 1754, um, 1775, and this one. They're all very similar in that yeah. once you want to play one of them, you can play all them, which is good because the rules do all suck for all of them. <laughs> they do not, they need to pay someone to write, or they need to pay Rodney Smith to do rules reviews for every single one of their games. 
they need to do something because they are but the nice thing about this one as well as all the birth of america's i've talked about is once you know how to play one you know how to play one because yeah. they all play really similar no they all play very different they feel unique this one is really cool because there's this there's, there's commanders. This, this, there, this well, one's there's a, a neutral faction that you're trying to get on your side. There's there's a lot of the commanders. This one is the most different of them all. It is, and this is the newest one. This was his, I think, 95. This is definitely mm -hmm. slightly different. Um, so if you want to, you played the other ones. But again, if you played the other ones, and I would say of the other ones, I would say 1775 is probably the most straightforward. Yeah. Um, so if you want to learn the rules, play 1775 just to learn the rules, and then you can play any of yep. this series. Whereas one small step, that's it's gonna, a very that's, different yeah. game. It's not gonna you're that's not gonna be able to build off the the rules in the same way. But they're all really enjoyable yep. games. Um, and if you want something different, you know you're sick of the American ones of 1775, 1812, 1754. You get to play some and, Vikings, and you get some commanders in that one. So moving on to 22. Very unique deck builder. Undaunted. This happens to be Normandy. I like this one a bit better than North Africa, even though North Africa is newer, but I will like them both uh, a lot. I will put them probably here. So you've got a deck of cards, and those deck, that deck builder, um, you have a field that you can buy from, and you are using those cards to move your tokens around the map to achieve objectives. So this is kind of a war game. Kind of an area control game, depends on the scenario, and a deck builder. And you can add cards by playing the commander ones with bolster 2 or bolster 1A or those types. Or you can command and, and move other troops. You've got snipers. You've got uh, scouts. You have to scout the area before you can send people into it in order to get the, the, the hold the point. It turned out to be incredibly... I found this amazingly cool uh there is some dice play uh you got to shoot people um but it and this runs through now one of the things i kind of wish they did was have the artwork and stuff for actual people that were in world war ii but i understand why they didn't you, you would have to get all sorts of permissions and everything so these are fictional characters but Man, I thought the game was amazing. I, it really flows well, and as a deck builder, it is incredibly unique. It is, and they've done it, like, overall, the scenarios do try to feel the, the appropriate ones for, you know, North Africa, for right. Normandy. But at the same time, for me, the fact that, okay, you put names in them, but they're made-up names, that drives me nuts. Now, again, I understand, we said that, we were thinking about, well, would you really want to see your grandfather's name on this, and then he might, you know, like, yeah. there's a whole slew of reasons why they didn't do it but at the same time me the history teacher goes uh, it's okay yeah so but it's still a good game i will i will and it's it's very it's a different way that you build your deck and that's really neat so my 22 is another Catan, and this is another one especially ones this is rise the incas i really like this one um our kids like Catan. and i read the rules and i said our 10 year old's gonna hate this so we need a third player to, to learn the rules and I was right, hated it. Because you actually have to decline your civilizations. It's kind of that same way of like small world works, where you get one so far and then you make a new one and your other one's going to decline, but you still get to use them until you put the third one on your map, but you take your roads away. It really kind of changes up the feel of Catan yeah. because you're not building the same way. And eventually they become, those intersections will become free again for other people and you can build over them once they're in decline. So if you played a lot of Catan and enjoy it, but want something a little bit different, this is yeah. the game for you. Yeah. Plus there's this whole nother, um, there's these other wild uh, uh, resources. resources, that's the word I'm looking for, out there. So this is definitely has a very, it's still Catan. You're still going to feel like you're playing Catan. The basic rules are all Catan, but it's got a nice new layer to it of this sieve building that's really interesting. And I really enjoy, this is probably a little call to the new, this is the newest mm -hmm. one, but I've really- It's different, it's really it is. different. And I've really enjoyed it. Um, even though, as I said, as soon as I read the rules, I'm like, oh my gosh, he's not gonna like it. And I was right, he hated it. He was so upset we took away his rules. But, but we're like, we're trying to split, but hey, that, it's it's okay. that, it went on, you're doing better, you're winning. I don't care, I want my robes back. But anyways, Rise of the Incas, if you like Catan, but want something a little different, this is the game for you. 
what we're doing is we're slowly preparing you for the next set of videos because um, we're also getting excited. You can tell we're getting to the top of the list. These are the games we love the most. You're, you're very talking. I'm not. Viticulture, worker placement, wine, good. Okay. I don't know why he <laughs> ranked this so low. It's disgusting. 21? I don't know. Crazy. You're right. It's garbage. You know, every, every game below 20 is garbage. He thinks it's garbage. That, that's no. the answer. I love this game. So chances are, if you know what I like, I love worker placement everything. So I think it's great. Uh, the, the mechanisms work really well. Um, Tuscany is, is critical, I think, because it, it gives you a lot of flexibility on how to do it. We've got the uh, original one with the, this did come with the, the big meeple though. Uh, so I think this was the second edition. They now have an essential edition that includes some some critical uh, expansion content, and then they got Tuscany ex uh, critical. There's a few expansions that came in the Tuscany box that that aren't really important, I think. But honestly, this is a great worker placement. Um, you've got a lot going on. Would say if you get some of the expansion, don't mix the advanced and basic cards. Because if somebody gets all the advanced, they're in a world of hurt. But overall, worker placement-wise, it's smooth, very streamlined, but has so many options. And with the uh, expanded board, I'll, I'll give you the expanded board gives you a lot more to think about. This is a great game. Uh, I will play it and have played it with you anytime you've asked. And... Honestly, it says 45 minutes to 90. I think we now have it so that we're done in a half hour. Probably 45 minutes of setup and cleanup. Yeah. I would say do not play the six player. We no. did that once. No. It says it holds six. It does not. Liars. Five. Yes. Yeah. Five. Five at, no, I would even say four. Yeah. Don't go to this too much This is a downtime. really good four-player game. I would not play it at five or six, mm -hmm. but it's good. We love the Tuscany expansion. And there are some of the Tuscan expansions we're not so sold on, but, you yeah. know, we played through them all, and we play now the ones that we really like. No, they lie. Six. No no six. Yeah, Either. don't play six player. You can go watch a, a, a episode of Friends before your turn comes back up. Pretty much, yeah. So, now my 21 is, this is definitely Call to the New. This is one we just got. We actually had a bad experience with the, a tiny epic, and we're kind of like, we don't like them, because... We're also not a big fan of tiny for the sake of tiny. Yeah. Um, it's like, okay, can we just double the size of everything so we can actually see what we're doing? This one, though, works. We really enjoyed it. The theme is great. Um, it's neat that you still get something even if your dinosaur, like, you know, attacks you, but you're giving your opponent something if you get that attack because then they can more easily get that action you were just on. But you're still going to get that dinosaur, so you don't feel like you're yeah. constantly going backwards. It doesn't feel as uh, punishing. Yeah. But we really enjoyed it. And really, I think this put us back, oh, you know, maybe we do like those tiny epic games after all. Because as I said, we had, a, we had a couple of kind of bad experiences with them. But this one, we really enjoyed. It's work replacement. It's really cute how you get to build up your little dinosaur enclosures. And again, it does feel very much Jurassic Park in that your dinosaurs will break out and eat each other. They will run away. So you definitely have to be paying attention to all those pieces. Yep. I will say, uh, be prepared for our next set of videos. We're going to cut them even shorter. I'm hoping to get five in. We had four of us do it and we got too excited. So we all, we all went a little long. So it's like six hours of video. I'm going to see if I can't cut it down to where we need to be. Um, but I think it'll be great. We brought in some, some friends to give you guys different, different viewpoints because a lot of our a lot of our top 20 is overlap, a lot of it. Um, so we wanted to make sure somebody else, uh, we had a couple of extra people, good people that are, are great gamers, but different different um, views on games come in and, and do it. And we're thinking about adding kind of a, a almost bi-weekly discussion. We'll keep it shorter than six hours, but bi-weekly discussion on a gaming topic to add to the channel. I think it'll be fun. Uh, so we'll see you in that next video. Thanks. Thanks. Bye.